We're cooking on a lane. To set it up, to fire it up, first thing you do is open the door on the cooker, open the damper in the smokestack, open all the pinwheel dampers, open the firebox damper door. When firing up your cooker, you want to use your smallest pieces of split dry wood. Make sure your wood's dry. It's not full of moisture. Put your smallest pieces of wood in your cooker. Put it in there in a, in a manner that you can feed it together. Like so. Along those lines. And then what you want to get a hold of is a propane starter. A lot of other options available, but the propane starter works real good. comes to lighting the wood up the, the big thing to do is just build a big fire whether you start with a propane torch or you know uh, you know just some kindling or some 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 uh, lighter fluid charcoal anything you want to do to get it started you're going to burn all that out before you get to cooking so you don't have to worry about it too much as far as what you started it up with you can use kindling a lot of people go crazy when you hear fat lighter kindling but uh, you can use it and it'll help you start your fire right up and get it rolling. The idea is to get the fire going, get the cooker hot, and it'll burn out any impurities and burn clean by the time you're ready to cook. Plenty of air so that you can get a real hot fire as quickly as possible. I'm going to closing it up until it's ready. Right now our temperature is climbing on up 200 degrees. In a few minutes this grill will be 300 plus. Then we'll be ready to knock the fire down and we'll have a good burning coals and embers and it'll be time to start thinking about loading that meat on there. But not until you get your fire built and you get your cooker hot. A lot of people have a tendency to get the fire going, get some smoke going, close everything up and wait to see who's home. There's nobody home. Won't be until that cooker gets hot and ready to sear that meat. You just let it draft. You can see how it's drafting there now. The way the smoke's drawing and drafting up. That fire's starting to catch up a little bit. Yep. That's the open latch position right there, propped open over the latch. And this is the open latch position right here. That way it's drafting real good. Your temperature will start to climb right on up. You notice from the smokestack, the way that it's starting to suck its wind, it's drafting. And it'll just keep drafting and drafting until pretty soon it's drawing like a freight train. When you get past the smoke, get to some heat and it'll be just clear heat coming out of here. It won't be a bunch of smoke. And that's when you're ready to cook. All right, notice how your, uh, your gauge, your temperature is starting to cr climb up. You're up in the red zone, you know, 250 and up, 300 degrees. You can start to really sear some meat. Notice how your smoke stack, a lot of smoke's gone away and it's pretty much a clear heat starting to resonate out of it. Now you can start thinking about getting ready to cook. You're not quite there, you're going to go up past your cooking temperature and then drop into it from the top. That way when you load the meat on, it doesn't cool the cooker down and you have a recovery issue. This, uh, this cooker will cook real fine when you throw some meat on it just by cranking the temperature up right. And it all comes from letting, letting plenty of air get to the fire to get it started. Look how clear the smokestack is. 
got some heat there now. We can start thinking about cooking. You're at a 300 degrees, pure heat jumping out of that smokestack. Now you got something to work with. As they say, there's somebody home now. Now this temperature is going to run on up. It's going to go way on past here. In a few minutes, we'll knock all that fire down in that box and we'll have a real good bed of coals and embers and it'll be time to put the meat on and get to cook. Start to finish here, we hadn't even been messing around with it 20 minutes and our temperature is already up over 300. You can run your palms over the racks and you can recognize that radiant heat just as if the coals were right there. Matter of fact, you can't stay there very long. It's browning in there. And this is the new 36 inch black stainless steel patio models. They've won two reserve brand championships in the last three weeks by some of the competition cooks on the circuit. Now, before we walk away from out here, this thing will be smoking like crazy. Now you do bring them down like that, but it's gradual. It's a slow process. You add a piece of wood during the cook, you pull it back a little bit. You slowly feather and bring back those dampers. You don't pull them way back and start to smoke. Now I just pulled them way back. We'll turn this damper right here. And watch here, the temperature will start to hold, but it'll get real smoky. The smoke starting to come back into it now. What you want is like this. Clear heat running out of that thing, just like that. Now during the seasoning process and after the cooking, you'll want to clean your cooker. You do so by spraying water in, use it naturally. Uh, long handle wire brush and clean any areas you cook, brush them down, spray them off like that. And watch that steam, it'll get you. Now, see how all the debris runs right out where the grease runs out when you're cooking? You put your catch under there. Out here in the country, we don't have to worry about it. But that's how you keep a clean grill that's seasoned in oil and gives you that snappy, fresh result. You can't get it from rancid stuff laying in there from the last time it was cooked in. We're cooking on a land.